everyone welcome again to another tutorial by timecode pro this is jimmy once again just doing a tutorial on some typography uh, i was playing around with this earlier just for my own kind of advertising needs and kind of liked where it was going uh, so i thought hell i'll just do a quick tutorial on it just to give people an idea of how it's done um, nothing too mind-blowing just kind of clean corporate nice color scheme that's pretty much it this is really just a list of the stuff that are company offers so documentary music video weddings live events corporate video and advertising and so forth so that's the kind of thing we're going to be aiming to get at by the end of the tutorial so let's get straight in there and start up a new project for this one i'm going to be working in 72025 uh, it's just a preset in after effects everyone should have it i'll give this a name type og Okay, cool. So, first off, I'm going to throw in some text. I'm going to make it white so I can see it on the black background. And I'll use the same text that I used in the last clip you just saw, or thereabouts. So, time code pro. Uh, that'll do for the first one. So, I'm going to hit down here in my timeline just to deselect that. Go back to my selection tool. And first thing I'm going to do is move my anchor point to the middle of my text. So I get my pan behind tool and I click and drag on the anchor point and move it to where I need it to be. Just there is good. Now I don't want to dwell on this too much, the position of the text. I really want to run through this as quick as I can for you guys. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to keep the text the same. So all I'm going to do, click on my text layer. I can either go edit, duplicate, or if you notice we've got Apple D as a shortcut. So I'm going to do that a few more times, so three, four, five. Let's say we've got six layers of text now. Now the first thing I need to do is make all these 3D. I can do this by highlighting them all and hitting on one of the 3D switches. Or I can just click and drag thusly. Now if I take a layer of text, I'm going to start spreading these around. So let's put one over here, one down here, one up, and again down here somewhere. Okay, that's cool, I believe. That is everyone. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Okay. Next up, I'm going to position them in 3D space, sort of offsetting them um, on the Y axis mainly, maybe on the Z and the X, but predominantly it's going to be on the Y axis. So if I click and drag, highlight all of my bits of text, and I hit R on the keyboard after rotation. Now, what I don't want to do here is change my orientation, it's just my Y, X, Y, and Z. So let's take this one here, we've got over here. I'm going to spin that off 90 degrees on the Y. And start that over here somewhere. And I'll, do, I'll keep this one roughly where it is. And I want this one again to be spun off. Let's find it. But I want it to be twisted the other way this time, so minus 90. So it's facing the opposite to our first bit of text. And again, I'm going to position this near this bit of text over here. Now this is admittedly quite crude at the moment but it's just enough for me to get an idea of where things are. Now I'm going to take this one and flip it 180 degrees on the Y axis, so all the way around, and place it roughly at the end of the last bit of text I use. Uh, what should we do with this one? Let's spin this one off. Uh, let's go crazy with this one. Let's spin it off I'm going to do that. I'm going to spin it this way on the Z and yeah, we'll flip it on along the Y as well. 180. All the time I'm keeping the numbers divisible by 90, so 90, 180, 270, and so on. Let's get that roughly beneath this one, somewhere around there. And then finally, this one will come along the bottom like that and move it back a bit so it's roughly in line with it. Okay, so it's going to look a little weird, it's the same word repeated over and over again, but just so you guys get an idea of the motion. That's what this is all about. So next up we're going to go layer, new, camera. Um, camera 128mm, that's fine. Hit OK. Now I hit C on the keyboard, or I can go up here to my camera selection tool, 
So I've got unified orbit track um, track in Z, so back and forward. So if I click and drag with my orbit tool, I can start to see how the text is laid out. Now at the moment it's a little messy. I can I kind of see where I want to be with it, so I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. So I'm going to take this bit of text, I'm going to slide that along, and back to C. C on the keyboard, a little shortcut to get back to your camera. And we're hopping between C and V. So V selection, C camera. I'm just going to get this in line with the text that I want it to be in line with. Okay. Okay, somewhere around there. And again, this one, I'm going to line it up over here at the end of the O. Let's say around here. Not quite right, about there. Okay, that'll do. And again, this one, sort of facing away from it at the end of the O. Okay, that'll do. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. The last bit I need to change is this one just here. So I move that a bit more snug under there. That's cool. And finally, my layer at the bottom. It's going to give that a bit of space. Okay, cool. That's looking cool. So it's just a random kind of shape. You could go really creative with this, make a kind of 3D cube if you like, um, and obviously make the camera fly from one to the other. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to delete the camera that I've got on there at the moment. You'll see why in a minute. So I hit delete. I'm going to go layer, new, null object. Now the effect I'm going to use is a free plugin uh, available from Video Copilot. The legend that is Mr. Andrew Kramer, um, him and his company developed this a while back, and it's proven to be of great use, to put it lightly. So yeah, sure target, we're going to click and drag that straight onto our null. Now, don't be surprised if things start disappearing and you can't keep track of where your text is and that. All we need to do to get this going is, I'm going to collapse these down first, so everything's a little neater. Go to my sure target plugin, which is on my null. And I'm going to go to target layers. Now, if you've got different words on your text, you're going to obviously have an order, you know, which they want to appear in, like on my other video. So for the time being, all I need to do is just select a different number. So five, four, three, two, and the final one. So straight away, you've seen that the position of the camera has moved. What? Sure target does is uses the null object's 3D position data and kind of straps the camera to the null. So wherever the null goes, the camera follows it. That's the kind of best description I can come up with for the time being. Now, this little attribute up here, if I click and drag through this, the camera's going to start flying around between different bits of text, as you can see. Not only does it not rotate, it's not doing it in the right order. So it's going to be easier for you guys if you've got your text in the right order and so forth. So let's say I want to start down here on this one. This is number five. So I need to set my first target as number five. Uh, let's see. Now my second target, I want to be this one just here, which is number two. So I go to my null and target number two. This is my third here, which is number four. So I go to my third target and choose four, which is already on. Next, I'm going to go this one just here, which is number what, no number. So my null again. What are we up to here? One, two, three, four. Target number four is none. Number five is number three. So target five. Text layer three, and we should have one left, which will be number six. Right over on the right hand side. Good. So now if I click and drag it should do it in the order that we want it to follow. But again it still doesn't rotate quite right. So all we need to do is hit this button just here, auto rotate. And what that'll do is when we click and drag the camera is going to start spinning onto the face of the text as you can kind of see now. The only trouble with it how it is is everything's a bit messy, things overlap and it's not really, I mean like there, that's not really what you want. 
So I'm going to go back to the beginning. To get around this, the quickest and sort of nicest way I found was to go onto the camera's attributes, drop down, camera options, and turn your depth of field on. When it's on, you're going to want to crank up your aperture, just so that all the other text blurs out, and all you can see is the way that you want to see. So if I go back to my null, and use my sure target slider to drag through, you should be able to see now, as the words overlap, we only see the words we want to see. So, like so. So I'm going to throw in some keyframes so we've got some natural camera movement. I'm going to start at the beginning of my composition, check my stopwatch for sure target. I'm going to move forward about a couple of seconds or so. If I hit U on the keyboard, it shows me any keyframes that I've got on for this specific layer. So I'm going to make another keyframe with the same value, 1, move forward a bit, changes to 2. And what that's doing is, between this keyframe and this keyframe, it's telling the camera to move from your target layer number one to your target layer number two. And it's that simple all the way through. So I'm going to go in, make another one at number two, because I want it to stay looking at that bit of text between there and there. Move forward just a touch. Go to number three. Give it some space. Three again. Forward a touch. Four. And so forth. Okay, so I've got all my keyframes in there now. Let's have a quick review. I'm just going to turn my depth of field off, just so it's a little less power thirsty on the machine. Let's see how this looks. So we go from one to two, holding on two, two to three, gradually. There we go. You can see this is working. That's fine. That's all we need to be at the moment. Now, if we want to speed things up, the animation or the time we spend on the text or respectively slow it down. There's two things I can do. I can either individually click and drag on a keyframe and start spacing these out or I can highlight them all, go to the beginning or the end keyframe for the layer, hold alt and click and drag and this will crush all of your keyframes proportionally as it will if you drag it out. Just a little tip for you there. Hopefully that will come in, come in useful. So I've got my movement, I've got my rotation in there I'm going to flip my depth of field back on. Uh, one other thing I'm going to have on there is some motion blur for all of my layers. So I'm going to click on one layer on my timeline, hit Apple A, and collapse these down just so I can see them all a little better. Now I want the motion blur on for the composition and then on for all of my text layers. So I can highlight my text and check my motion blur tab. It's only a subtle difference, but it, I really, really like it. Whenever you're, whenever I'm doing any kind of text animation, it's just a given thing that I know I'm going to do. I'm going to put some motion blur on there just to sell it. it looks a little more organic, more natural. It's a, I think it's a must. Unless you're doing some kind of corporate work where it needs to be easily read and visible and all that. Anything creative, though, definitely have your motion blur on there. So that's looking nice, nice and smooth. Good. Okay, so now. I want to flip my colours around, so I want black text on a white background. Now, I could go through the motions of putting in a solid, changing the text colour, but the quickest way for me now is to go adjustment layer, go to my effects, invert, click and drag onto my adjustment layer. Now everything's disappeared um, because obviously our text is now black on a black background. It's technically not a black background. Um, After Effects defaults to black background. Um, if you click this button just here, toggle switch, uh, toggle transparency, you can see what's transparent and what's not. So obviously I can see that my text is there and there's not really a background. So I need to throw a background in there. I'm going to go Layer, New, Solid. I'm going to make this background uh, black. You may be thinking, why are you making it black? Because we've got black text. But obviously when I put it under my adjustment layer, Look what happens. It becomes white because our adjustment layer is inverting all of the colours that are beneath itself. I hope that makes sense. And on this background layer, I'm going to throw in a ramp um, to give ourselves a nice kind of radial gradient. So at the moment it's linear. I'm going to change this to radial and move my points to where I want them. So I'm going to put this one pretty much dead centre and drag this one out just a bit. Now this does, it gives us a nice kind of gradient in the background and it also doubles up as a kind of soft vignette. 
vignettes are kind of burnt edge corner look that draws all your attention to the middle. Now one of the things I'm doing at the moment, which a lot of people seem to be doing, it's the in thing, it looks nice, is ramp scattering. Ramp scattering is used when you've got banding going on between sort of similar colours. So if I drag this up, you should be able to see, if I drag it loads, you should be able to see everything starts to get quite grainy and pretty horrible to be honest. Uh, you want to kind of just balance it so it looks right to your eye. I'm going to go around 40-ish, about 45 maybe. Seven bit too much still, maybe less. Okay, cool, that's cool. 26 around there, only 20, 26 somewhere in that field is good. And all it does, it gives us a more kind of grainy, natural look that you're going to get off a, off a camera, not kind of perfect colours and perfect everything. Um, okay, so that's cool. Let's see how it's looking. That'll do. Yeah, I can see this is exactly where I want to be with it all. Um, now, obviously, it's up to you. You don't have to go for the same colours, the same text, the font. You know, it's entirely up to you what you guys do with it. Um, with it, there's quite a few neat little things you can do. Uh, because we're working in 3D space, obviously, you can throw some particles in there. Um, this obviously gives it more depth. Uh, looks quite cool as well. But for the time being, on this tutorial, I'm going to call that a day, I think. Um, and really leave you guys to have a play around with it. Any questions or queries or suggestions, requests, anything like that, by all means, drop us a, a message and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.